Hello guys, welcome back to another Android application development tutorial. Today we are going to learn an important segment in Android application development tutorial called Fragments. So instead of creating multiple activities, you can divide an activity into modules using Fragments. So before create an example on Fragments, you must have some theoretical concepts of how to use a fragment in an activity. That's why here, here I create a simple presentation. So from this presentation, you can get the basic concepts of how to use fragment in an activity. So now we can start the presentation. Uh, fragments are used for creating dynamic and multi-pane user interfaces in Android. Uh, while creating an Android app, you need to encapsulate user interface components and activity behaviors into modules and you can create these modules using fragments. By using fragments, you can divide an activity into modules. So here is an example. So from this example, you can understand what is a fragment and what is the actual use of a fragment in an Android application. Uh, so here is the example. So here we have uh, two screen sizes, uh, a large screen and a standard screen size. So here, we have a single activity on both the on both of the screen sizes but here we divide that single activity into two module the first module is fragment a and second module is fragment b on a large screen we display the two module at the same time but on a normal screen on a small screen we display one module at a time and the user have to click the fragment a to open fragment b so this is the actual use of a fragment in an activity. So instead of creating multiple activities, you can divide an activity into modules. So here we divide a single activity into two modules called fragment A and fragment B. On a large screen, we display two modules at the same time, but on a normal screen, we display only one module. This is the actual use of fragment in Android application development. That means you can easily create dynamic user interfaces using fragments. Like activities, fragments also have separate layout and class files. Fragments also have lifecycle methods similar to activity. By using fragments, you can optimize user experience on different screen sizes. You can add or remove a fragment while the activity is running. Now we can learn about how to create a fragment. You have to create a class that extends fragment class. You must override one of the lifecycle method called onCreateView to inflate the fragment layout. So, like activities, fragment also have lifecycle methods. So, in activity, we have to override one lifecycle method called onCreate. But in the case of fragment, you have to override a method called onCreateView. Here is a simple example of fragment class. Here the class name is article fragment that extends fragment. So here we have to override one lifecycle method called onCreateView. Uh, that method contains three parameters, uh, a layout inflator object, uh, a view group object, and a bundle object. So here by using the layout inflator object, we call a method called inflate. So here the first parameter is the layout reference. So this is the uh, layout corresponding to this fragment second parameter is the container and final parameter is a boolean value so this is a simple example of fragment class now we can learn how to add a fragment to an activity you can add a fragment to an activity in two ways first one you can add a fragment directly to the xml layout file second one you can add a fragment at the runtime so if you want to add, remove or replace a fragment at the activity runtime, you have to add the fragment programmatically. 
Okay, we can learn each of these. First one, we can learn how to add a fragment using XML. You need to add a fragment by defining each fragment within your activity XML file. Here is a simple example. So here, this is a layout that contains two fragments. So if you want to add a fragment using XML, you need to specify an element called a fragment in your layout file. And here, the first argument name indicates the class corresponding to that fragment. So here the first class name is headline fragment. That is the class corresponding to the first fragment. And here we specify an ID for the fragment. Specify some other parameters like weight, uh, width and height. So this is the second fragment. Here is the class name corresponding to that fragment. So this layout contains two fragments. So this is how we add a fragment directly to the XML file. Now we can learn how to add a fragment at a runtime. If you add the fragment using XML, then it is not possible to remove the fragment at the runtime. If you want to add, remove or replace a fragment during activity runtime, then you have to add the fragment programmatically. For performing the fragment transactions such as add, remove or replace, you have to create an object of fragment transaction class using the fragment manager object. If your activity support fragment removal or replace, then you have to add the initial fragment to the activity from the activities on create method. To add a fragment at the runtime, you must provide a container view for the fragment in your activities layout file in which you can insert the fragment. So here is an example. So if you want to add, remove or replace a fragment at the runtime, then you must specify a container view for the fragment in your layout file. So here is a simple example of container view. So here the container view is a frame layout. Here we specify an ID for the container view. You have to call the get support fragment manager to get the fragment manager object. For getting the fragment transaction object, you have to call the begin transaction method on the fragment manager object. For add a new fragment, call the add method on fragment transaction object. You can perform multiple fragment transaction for the activity using the same fragment transaction object. When you are ready to make the change, you can simply call the commit method on the fragment transaction object. If you want, if you want replace a fragment, then you have to call the replace method instead of the add method. To allow the user to navigate back through the fragment transaction, you must call the add to backstack method before commit the fragment transaction. So here another important thing, if you call the add to backstack method, if you replace a fragment, that fragment is going to the stop, stop state, it is not destroyed. If you do not call the add to backstack method, if you replace or remove a fragment, that fragment will be destroyed. So here is an example of how to add a fragment at the runtime. So here is a simple activity that extends fragment activity. So first we have to check whether the container is available on the activities layout file. So here we check that one by using the find view by id method. If it is not null, we can add the fragment to the container. So here another important thing, we have to check whether the saved instance state is null or not. However, if you are being restored from a previous state, that means the activity is resumed, then we don't need to do anything and should return or else we could end up with the overlapping of fragment. So if the activity is resumed, that means the fragment is already added. In that case, it is not need to add the fragment again. 
so if you avoid this step it will end up with the overlapping of fragment so you have to check this one first and here we create the object of the class sorry object of the fragment here the fragment name is headline fragment so here uh, we have to add some data to the fragment we have to pass some arguments to the fragment so here we get the extras field of the indent of the activity and we set it to the fragment object by using this method set arguments and finally we can add the fragment to the container so the first thing we have to get the fragment transaction for that you have to call the get support fragment manager and you have to call the begin transact begin transaction method and finally you can call the add method so on the add method first parameter is the fragment container second parameter is the fragment class object and finally you can commit i hope from this presentation you get the basic concepts of how to use fragments from the next video onwards uh, we can learn how to add a fragment by using xml and by using by programmatically so from the next ex from the next video onwards we are going to learn about fragments with an example for getting more android tutorial updates please subscribe this channel now thank you for watching see you in the next episode